Before we start talking about the render settings, it would make sense to talk about some effects that will make the renders look more realistic. In particular, we will be talking about the global illumination and the ambient occlusion. Here we have a simple scene with a bed and two bedside tables, and also I've created a couple of cameras so we can easily switch back and forth between these different angles. So if I go out to my wide angle, that's this camera I'm seeing the scene through now, and I have my right view, and then the left view, and then a top view as well. I'll switch back to my wide angle. You'll also see that I've created some walls here. This basically was a cube and I made the cube editable. And before I explain to you how the global illumination works, I'm going to go ahead and render this scene using the Shift R shortcut. This is going to render it to the picture viewer. So I'm just going to press Shift R so that the picture viewer comes up and the whole scene gets rendered. I'll also render the same scene from a slightly different angle. Let me maybe go up to my top view and render it from here as well. So I'll shift R. And then finally, I'll render this from the side view as well. So let me close this and then go to my right view maybe and then render it from here. Shift R again. The reason why we do Shift R instead of Control R is so that we can render these to the picture viewer, which means that they'll be saved inside the history states here which also means that we can come back and revisit these states to compare and contrast what the current versions look like to what they were like initially. I'm now going to go ahead and close my picture viewer. And I'm going to switch back to my wide angle. And I'll create a couple of materials and I'll apply them to the walls here. So let me just go ahead and double click here. And that's going to be called red. And I'll change the color to be red as well. So something like that and I'll apply it to the left wall. And I'm going to create a new material and then call that one blue and make that blue as well. So I'm going to go pick a blue color, maybe something like this, and then apply this to the right wall. And then I'm going to create a new material and call this white. And I'm not going to change the color here. I'm just going to apply it to the back wall and the floor, and maybe even to the ceiling. So let me come out of this camera first, then zoom out. I can apply this to the ceiling as well. Then I'll go back into my wide angle. Let's now do a render, so I'll press Shift R again. And once this is done, I'm going to close it and go to my top view and render it from here as well, Shift R. And then finally, once this is done, I'm going to render it from the right view as well. So I'll close this and go to my right view and I'll render it from here as well. You see, adding some colors to the scene didn't really make much difference in the render times. So if I go to my render settings here, the first one, the first frame took about nine seconds to render. The second set, the first frame of that, where we had the colors, so this one versus this one. This one took about 9 seconds and this one about 8 seconds. And I would say probably these two would be the same. So this could be something to do with the processing of the computer at that given time. If I now go to my second one, this was about 21 seconds and this is again about 20 seconds. And the final one took about 17 seconds and that's exactly the same as what I have here as well, 17 seconds. So here I just wanted to show you that adding more colors doesn't necessarily make your renders slower. Some other materials like reflection, refraction and so on, they'll make the renders slower, but not just changing the colors. Let me now explain to you what the global illumination is about. Let's close this. In Cinema 4D, lights by default do not bounce around. What that means is in this scene, for example, when you had the left wall colored red and the right one colored blue, normally, if this was a real scene, the light would bounce off those walls and it would actually illuminate the scene with those colors embedded. For example, the left side of the bed would take the red tint a little bit, and then the right side of the bed would actually show us the blue tint, and so on. In Cinema 4D, this does not happen by default. This is one of the reasons why the scenes look a little unrealistic in Cinema 4D by default. And of course, the main reason behind this, as you may have guessed, is to reduce the render times. To simulate the light bouncing around the scene is an intensive task for the computer. That's why that function is turned off by default. And that is what we mean by global illumination. To turn the global illumination on, all you have to do is to go to your render settings, which we will talk more about in detail later on, 
and the render settings are here. So you click on this clapperboard with the little cogwheel on the side, or you press Ctrl B or Command B if you're on the Mac. And this brings up your render settings. As I said, we will talk more about these in the future tutorials. But for now, let's go down to the effect button here, the bottom left corner, and then click, and we'll just go and add the global illumination effect. I'm not going to change any of these settings now. I'll just come out and simply close this. And then I'll go to my wide angle. And I'll re-render this. I'm going to press Shift R. And as it's rendering, already you're going to start seeing something different. You see that the render scene looks a little different actually. It's creating these different sample points. This is called the Radiance Cache Prepass. And once it calculates these, it's then going to start rendering it. And you'll see that the color will start bleeding from the left wall to the bed on the left, and from the right wall to the same bed on the right hand side. Right away, you may have noticed that the entire scene is looking a little brighter than it was before. And if I compare this to what we had before, so let me go to my initial render settings render here, so this is the very first one. This is what we had before, let's zoom in so we can see what's happening. So I'm going to use 2 and just zoom in. This is what we had before, and then when we had the colors on the walls, this is what it was like. Let's zoom in a bit more. And then when we turn the global illumination, this is what we ended up with. You can see that the red of the wall here is actually coming in and actually making this part of the bed a little more red as well. Same thing happens here, with this time the blue color. So if I now go back to the one without the global illumination, this was the one, and then go to the same one with the global illumination, you can see that the right side of the scene looks a lot more blue than the left side does. Let's have a look at what this looks like on the other side. So I'm going to close this, and let's go to the right view. And if I render this, let me zoom out. One downside to the global illumination, of course, is that it takes quite a long time to render. You can see that my first render took about 9 seconds in total, and this one we just did took about 53 seconds. So that's quite a big increase and jump on the render time. Let's see how long this one takes from the right view. You see that the first one took about 17 seconds, and then this one is already up to about 45, 46 seconds and still counting. Let's see how long this one takes now. And once it's done the first pass, it starts creating the render here. So this is taking almost a minute and a half already. You can see this took almost two minutes to render versus the previous one, which was only 17 seconds. But this is the difference in quality. Let me zoom in here. This is the latest one with the global illumination. And this is the previous one without the global illumination. Now the difference is great. It's a huge difference. The dark areas here you see are all black. There's no detail at all. With the global illumination, we have all the detail. And in fact, it takes the color of the right wall as well, because the light is bouncing off the right wall to illuminate these parts of the scene. Let's zoom out. And now let's have a look at the settings of the global illumination. So let me go close this and press Command B to bring up the settings. I'm going to move this out of the way so we can see what's happening. In the global illumination, under the general tab, you have two options. One is called the primary method. The other one is called the secondary method. These refer to what happens to the light when the light bounces off the first time, that's the primary method, and the secondary method is what happens to the lights for the consecutive bounces. So let's first go to primary method, and the first option here we have is Irradiance Cache. If you click on this, the only other option here that you'll see is the Quasi Monte Carlo. There's another one here down at the bottom that says Irradiance Cache Legacy. This is for the older version to keep this backwards compatible, so we'll ignore this. So we have two options, one is the Irradiance Cache, the other one is the Quasi Monte Carlo. Now, Irradiance Cache is going to be fine for most cases, but especially when you want to do animations, you want to switch back to Quasi Monte Carlo to create some flicker-free, better results. With one downside, that's going to take a lot longer, although the results are going to look much better, the render times are going to increase a lot. There's actually some quite complex science behind this, but for now, it's enough to know that Irradiance Cache is going to be enough for most of the still renders that you do, and the Quasi Monte Carlo is going to be relevant when you do animation, so that this creates flicker-free animations. And also just keep in mind that the higher the quality, like the Quasi Monte Carlo, the longer, the much longer it will take to render. So, I will leave this on the Radiance Cache for now, and then the secondary method, I will also set this to Radiance Cache. And look what happens now when we render this with the secondary method turned to Radiance Cache. So let me close this. And then from the right view again, I'm going to render, so I'm going to press Shift R. You may notice that the little dots here that we are getting, the samples, are actually slightly brighter than what we had before. 
That's because the light is bouncing off twice, so the whole scene is a little bit brighter. And what that means is that the light is bouncing off the right wall initially, onto the bed, and from the bed, it bounces back off towards the right wall as well as the floor and in all directions. That's why the entire scene should be a little bit brighter with the secondary method turned on. I'm going to speed this part of the video up to save you some time. You can see that this render is finished now and it almost took about two and a half minutes compared to the last one which was just under two minutes. And here's the difference. This one is going to be slightly darker so that the colors aren't as blended as the next one, which is here. And this one you can see is much brighter so that the colors are blending much more because the light is bouncing off not just once but the second time as well. So here's before and here's after. We can actually see some red on this table as well here. You can see how the red is bouncing off the wall there onto this table. And if I go back to the very early ones, let's say here, that's a huge difference going from this render to this render. Now let's keep on working on the settings a little bit more. So let me close this picture viewer. And if I go back to my render settings, control B, the diffuse depth here refers to how many times the light bounces around. So in real life, this is an infinite amount of number. And in here, the max you can go to is eight. So if I just pump this all the way up to eight, and then render this one more time. So if I close this and render this one more time. Now this is going to take even longer because the light needs to bounce off more times than it did before, but it should make things much brighter and a lot more realistic as well. Again, I'm gonna speed up this part of the video as well. So you don't have to sit there and watch this until the render is complete. This render is complete as well, and it took about 3 minutes and 11 seconds. Let's compare this to what we had before, to the previous one. So this is the one where we had the diffuse depth set to 2, and this is the current one with the diffuse depth set to 8. You can see the difference already. The entire scene is much brighter than what we had before. And also, we have a much better color blending. So if you look at the red coming from this wall, it actually reaches all the way out towards this side of the bed. And similarly, the blue coming from the right-hand side wall is reaching out all the way towards about here. So this is before, this is after again. So far, I've been switching back and forth between different states by literally just clicking on the names, but there's a better way of doing that. Let's say, for example, I want to take my previous render, this one, with the global illumination turned off, and I'm gonna set this as my state A, so this is the object A now, and if I come down to here to the last one and select it, and I can set this as object B, that will now give me this line here, which means I can click and drag this line around to compare the two different views. So the top one is the previous one, and the bottom one is the new one. And once you do that, you can then swap these around, so you can make this go up and down like that. And I can click on the second button to show me just the differences between the two states. So if I click here, I'll only see the differences between the two states. And if I click on this third button, it's going to make the line vertical instead of horizontal so that I see the two states on left and the right hand side. To turn the AB comparison off, I'll just go and click on this button and it goes back to how it was initially. Now this last one took about 3 minutes and 11 seconds and you may be saying to yourself, well that's fine. Instead of waiting 2.5 minutes, I'll just wait over 3 minutes and that's fine. And if you're going to render a single frame, you may be right. Waiting an extra half a minute will probably not do too much harm. But imagine if you're going to render this as an animation. In that case, every single second will count. Because when you are rendering an animation, you're going to render usually hundreds of frames, if not thousands, and there, every single second will count. So the difference between two and a half minutes and three minutes is going to be massive when you are rendering a couple of hundred or thousand frames from the animation. The last option I want to show you in the global illumination is the gamma option. So if I go back to my render settings, control B, the gamma here is the overall brightness of the scene after it's being rendered. This is very similar to using the levels adjustment in Photoshop and then dragging the middle slider in the levels adjustment towards left or towards right. In a nutshell, if you increase this number, let's say instead of one, if I set this to 1.5, this is going to make the entire scene much brighter without actually changing the dispersion of the lights. And then if I decrease this to be lower than one, let's say I set this to 0.7, it's going to leave the dispersion of the lights again the same but it's going to make the overall scene much darker. So you can control the overall brightness of the scene by tweaking the gamma property.